So I'll start a little bit with the background. Uh, I think it will really help set us up uh, to explain the results of the study and what we did. So today, when oncologists want to make decisions regarding cancer treatment, they um, often use the concept of performance status, which basically tells us how functional and active the patient is to try and predict how the patient would do with treatment. Are they going to have complications? Are they going to end up in the emergency room? Are they going to have a lot of side effects? Or is the treatment going to be helpful or not? And typically, patients who are very frail and sick and weak um, tend not to do very well and have a lot of complications. And the concept of performance status is, is very effective. It is predictive pretty much of um, all the results we look into uh, in, in cancer treatment, whether it's you know, good outcomes or bad outcomes. And it's cheap and easy to use, but there's more and more data that it is biased. It's really affected by the relationship between the patient and the provider. And also um, providers um, tend to um, have um, an assessment of performance status that is not necessarily up to date they might think of their patient, how they were a few months ago, and I re realize that today their function is really different. And because of this issue, a lot of different approaches have been brought up in recent years to try and look at different ways to not only assess performance status, but also to predict complications and uh, adverse uh, events in cancer patients getting treatment. So. Um, you, of course, know uh, a lot of work has been done in patient reported outcomes where those are basically questionnaires where uh, cancer patients would say how they uh, feel every week or at, uh, at any interval, and that would be used to predict complications and, and other outcomes in, in cancer care. And that has been really successful, but it takes a lot of toll from the patient and from the provider looking at all that data. Other groups have started looking at smartwatches. Can we track patients' movements and activity to get a sense of their performance status and maybe use that digital information to predict complications in cancer patients. And um, our group um, in this study, we have partnered with um, the Division of Research at Kaiser Permanente together with a um, local uh, tech company called Medibol. Medibol is a company that uh, develops digital platforms for clinical trials in oncology. And together we uh, wanted to explore um, whether or not uh, reports by caregivers about how the patient is doing can also be used as predictors of clinical outcomes. So in our study, we recruited 54 dyads um, of patients and their caregivers. And um, we recruited them over a few months at the end of 2020. And um, we gave each patient and each caregiver uh, an Apple Watch for the duration of the study, which was about a month, and also an, uh, a smartphone app. And we collected the physical activity using the smartwatch, as well as um, we collected um, regular surveys from the pa uh, patients about how they're doing, collecting patient reported outcomes, self-rated ECOGs, and other questionnaires, and from the caregivers. And using those observer reported outcomes or caregiver reported outcomes, um, we try to see if what the caregiver thinks about the patient, or how they are doing, is actually predictive of the patient's outcomes. As a uh, background to presenting the findings, I, I do also want to mention that um, last year we presented at ASCO Quality Symposium a survey that uh, we ran um, through uh, with all of our oncologists um, at Kaiser Northern California. And we had um, 38 respondents. And the survey had to do with how often and in what ways do oncologists use information from caregivers. And we found out that all of our oncologists often rely um, on caregiver reports on how the patient is doing to evaluate the patient's performance status and symptoms and also to make decisions. And what was really interesting in our finding is that, as, as a lot of people know, often the patient would say one thing and the caregiver would say another thing. 
a patient would say, I'm doing great. And a caregiver would be like, ah, you know, you remember last week, you couldn't get out of bed or something to that effect. And we asked our oncologist, what do you do in that scenario? And most oncologists either rely on what the caregiver is saying more than what the patient is saying, or they look for some kind of objective data, maybe like a smartwatch um, or other objective collected data to make a determination. So coming to our study now, we presented the um, first findings of our clinical study with the patients and their caregivers. And we collected from the caregivers two main types of reports. The first one was uh, what we coined caregiver reported outcomes, basically looking at asking the caregiver about the patient's symptoms. We, uh, once a week, the caregiver would go on the app and rate the patient's symptoms using um, a scale called the PRO-CTCAE. And the uh, caregiver would say, for example, you know, over the last week, the patient had, you know, severe, very severe nausea or moderate nausea or, or mild nausea or no nausea. And then go, uh, going over other symptoms as well, such as fatigue, depression, and others. And um, so that was one set of answers that we collected. And the other one was asking the caregiver, how is the patient doing physically? How active are they? Um, and for that, we used a, a scale called NIH Promise, which is a collection of questionnaires and specifically a subset of those questionnaires that had to do with physical function. And then um, we correlated the answers of the caregivers about the patient's function, the patient's symptoms with very important outcomes that we looked in, uh, for in oncology. We compared them to, uh, sorry, we associated them with the outcomes of um, mortality, hospice referrals, emergency room visits, hospitalizations, um, and treatment breaks, and regimen changes, things that are very important for um, clinicians. And uh, we had a pretty small study. This was a pilot study in preparation for hopefully a larger study in the future. So we didn't have quite a lot of events uh, in terms of those outcomes that I mentioned, ED visits, hospitalization, mortality, et cetera. Um, so that was a limitation of our study, but we did find out that the reports from the caregiver on the patient's symptoms were uh, predictive of a lot of the outcomes that we were looking at. So um, for example, the count of how many severe or very severe symptoms the patient had was a statistically significant predictor of hospitalizations and ED visits. And it was, uh, there was also a trend towards uh, statistical significance to predict uh, high-grade adverse events of chemotherapy and dose reduction, as well as the trends toward um, predicting uh, death. Um, when we looked at um, specifically um, the PROMISE questionnaires that correlated the um, patient's function and their outcomes, we also found that this would predict hospice referrals. Now, the main, uh, I think that th these are very interesting findings. I think this is one of the first publications to show that if you ask the caregiver how the patient is doing, that's very relevant information because it can help you predict how the patient would do in the future. And the next part of our um, study, um, the next part of our publications would focus on trying to put everything together, putting all the different predictors we collected, the patient reported outcomes, the caregiver reported outcomes, the data, uh, the, the mobility data from the smartwatch and um, what our nurses uh, um, collect as well, which is the nurses rated ECOGs and, and information on symptoms, trying to put all of that together into one predictive model to develop an algorithm that can be very accurate in uh, predicting complications in real time and hopefully uh, developing a clinical trial where we use this prediction model to identify those cases that are going to have a complication and try to intervene uh, and prevent that complication. That would be kind of like um, the, the, the holy grail of what we're trying to achieve eventually. So, Personally, for me, and I, I think for the rest of our group as well, we um, feel more confidently now to um, make sure we also collect information from the caregiver when we see patients in the clinic and 
um, knowing that adding that uh, question to the caregiver can improve how we predict those clinical outcomes in our cancer patients. In the future, I hope that once we develop this predictive model, we'll be able to have um, routine collection of different aspects or different data from the patients and their caregivers, such as their mobility and the caregiver port outcome, the patient port outcomes, and have a workflow where if there are certain um, situations that predict an impending complication, that we would have some kind of intervention depending on the situation. You know, either um, if it's something that is symptom related, might be a nurse or a pharmacist that would intervene. If it's something other, you know, might be the oncologist that would intervene. Thank <music> you.